Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Wonder Draft here on the Wooden Otter. Today we see the world from a dwarf's eye view as we draw up a map of the interior of the city of Ospero. That's right everybody, put on your mining helmets and grab your pickaxe because it's time to think like a dwarf. So I'm shooting to make a realistic map, isometric in style, of the interior of a dwarven city. So in fantasy settings, there is this, I want to say, trend of giving dwarves some kind of like grandiose architectural tradition with their cities, wherein their cities are all in a huge dome, or they're inside a dormant volcano. I don't mind those tropes when it comes to Dwarven cities, but the name of the game here on my channel is Realistic Cities. So when I think of a Dwarven city, I think of a mine, right? They mine for precious resources, they sell them to the outside world, they gain riches that way. It only makes sense that their cities would be built inside an actual mine, an actual, like, silver mine, gold mine, coal mine, uh, tin mine, you know, all the resources that a dwarf would mine as his livelihood, those structures have a purpose, and they follow a certain set of rules. So, here on Realistic Maps, we're going to be drawing a dwarven city following the rules of design that an actual real-world mine would follow. Now, I've done a little research, and apparently there are two main underground mine designs, and it all depends what you're mining for. So, the first design is for when your ore is, I don't want to say plentiful, but in a bulk deposit. So, think of coal, right? Coal is in these gigantic veins, or if you're mining out marble, or, or anything that is in large veins within the earth. So it's not something that's like a thin line of copper or a thin line of gold. It's not a precious metal in rarity. It's a little more common than a precious metal. It's, it's coal. So in that case, you would have what you see before you. This mine layout is what you would do if you had a plentiful resource like coal. And what you're looking at is basically the whiter areas of this drawing are the vein of the resource, whatever it may be. And I'm not going to go into details with the city on what exactly that is, but what you mine out is basically a grid which leaves you with a series of pillars. And the pillars serve to basically hold the earth above you from collapsing and killing everyone inside, and it allows you to extract the maximum amount of the resource safely. So I like to think that this would be a great starting point for one of like the gathering areas, the public areas, the grand halls of a dwarven city would be, hey, you know, we've mined out all this coal or we've mined out all this limestone for sale uh, to the surface dwellers. And now we have this huge pillared room, which we can now live in. The other method for digging out a mine is for resources that are a little bit rarer. Think think precious metals like gold, silver, copper, etc. And in this case, they tend to be in this type of deposit. And I know this drawing is, is not great, but it's what you're looking at is, look at this gold area here. Imagine a sheet of material kind of sliced into the earth, right? Like a sheet of gold sliced into the earth at a weird angle. You can't just dig down. You obviously don't get very much if you just dig horizontally. You have to access that sheet of material at multiple levels. So these thin, light blue tunnels are basically 
access points to give you access to a little bit of that sheet of rare metal. And these darker blue tunnels are basically spiraling ramps for mining vehicles to drive up and down. Now, dwarves don't have mining vehicles, per se, so they probably don't need the spiraling tunnels the, with the low slope that a vehicle could climb. But what they would end up having is upon digging out a gold vein or a silver vein or something like that, they would have these long kind of tunnels with side tunnels cut off of them uh, down multiple levels. You know, it's no dwarven city built in a mine is going to be on one level. It just wouldn't make sense if they were following an existing mine design. You'd have smaller levels and a lot of them. You'd have 7, 8, 15 levels of a dwarven city where each level is just one hallway with dwellings basically off of the hallway. So we're going to use that as inspiration and I'm going to try and maintain an isometric view of my map and we're going to do a few tricks to hopefully convey that there's these two basic structural designs at work in Osborough. throw some symbols in and see if I can't show you what I'm trying to do here.
Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for this episode of Wonder Draft. We, uh, we finished our interior map. I am tired. I don't ever want to make another map like this again. It was basically all symbols. Uh, not really a lot of the map making tools that Wonder Draft is known for. Uh, could I have done this in another program? Like, hell, even art? You know, like paint 3D or something like that. Yeah, I probably could have. Uh, but I didn't want to. I wanted to use Wonder Draft. And, uh, and I think I really liked the way it came out. We, uh, we have multiple kind of structures to our, our dwarven city. We've got our inclining hallways, uh, you know, the terraces and the midden warren are kind of like of the structure where you're mining out a vein of precious resources. We've got our large uh, pillared room, the main area of the city where the dwarves may have mined out something a little more common and less valuable, like coal or limestone or marble perhaps. We've got our little human part of the city, you know, for the ones that are okay living underground, Paul Walker Alley. And a little bit of a garden up here, which I think is great. Like, uh, they brought in some you know, mine shafts to channel the light down into, uh, you know, a, an area of trees so that they could get maybe some special fruit for alcohol making or something like that. Where they maintain a microclimate inside the cave to protect rare plants uh, used in their in their alcohol making. 
uh, or so I like to think. I've got a little garden area over here in the terraces, like I'm imagining that the dwarves living underground have a lot of mushrooms in their diet, things that uh, can grow underground easily, so perhaps these are fields of mushrooms that they maintain. Uh, and we also included a little bit of the outside world here, where it just kind of shows, hey, this is uh, the connection point with our previous map, the outside of Osboro, and this is the interior, underground portion of Osboro, and I'm, I'm really proud of it. There's a lot of you know, triggers for adventures, you know, we have a whole, um, like a necropolis down here in Reaverton. We've got a few mines here. We've got this tunnel going off to something. You know, it could be crypts, it could be something else, an expansion of the city, uh, or, or something like that. It could be anything, really. But, uh, yeah, plenty of places for adventure hooks to take place uh, in the city. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to. Uh, I appreciate it as always. Next time we get into Wonder Draft, which will be in a few days, I'm going to show you a tool that I am really happy with, that I think is a very cool way to uh, automatically generate realistic land masses and coastlines um, by using the actual you know, planet Earth, except we're going to alter it. So I'm really excited to show you that next time on the Wooden Otter. I will catch you then. Peace!